Sony ZV-E10 external monitor, do I need one? I can't tell you how many times I've heard this question on this channel here. And what I'm gonna do in this video today is try and make it clear for you so you can come away with knowing two things. One, what is a monitor? And two, do you actually need one? Now today I'm gonna to be talking about the Andy Cine A62. In all transparency, this company sent me this monitor and told me to leave a review. I could keep the monitor, but again, as I always say, whenever I do a review, I can say what I want about it. Now I've used Andy Cine products in the past. I'm actually using one of their SSD converter things, which I'll show you. And I love this thing because it goes perfectly in the Atomos Ninja, but let's get to the monitor. So first of all, what is a field monitor? Well, it's a monitor that you use out in the field. And no, I don't mean like where cows in the pasture are. I mean like when you're out working. So that right there should tell you something about what a monitor is for and why you would need one. So you use a monitor when you're out in the field. Now typically that means that you have work or that you're a professional or that you do videos for companies or some other person. Now that isn't always the case, but generally that's what monitors are for. It's for people who need to be in a situation where they need to have their picture magnified so they can make sure that their focus is on point, that their exposure is where it should be. And if there's other people around that are gonna be viewing whatever it is that they're recording, that they can see it as well. So typically, that's what a field monitor is for. So basically, it's just an external monitor that connects to your camera. So it can connect via HDMI, via SDI, if you have a more expensive camera, or a mini HDMI, whatever it is that you have. Now, if you've ever recorded anything and then later you looked at it and you were like, man, I did not see that little kid in the corner just looking at the camera like that. Well, that's because your monitor, when it's small like that, you miss details. So having a bigger monitor is key when you wanna make sure you have a detailed shot and you have control of everything that's going on. I can't tell you how many times I've sat down in front of this camera, looked in my little monitor over here, didn't see a problem, looked up and I said, oh, wow. <laughs> My mic is hanging down right in front of me and I just didn't see it because it was so small. So having a monitor is very important if you're concerned with making sure that your shot is detailed and perfect. So how do I know if I need a monitor? Well, I'm glad you asked. The way you'll know you need a monitor is if you've been in that situation before where you shot something, you got home and it wasn't what you thought because you didn't see it. Well, you need a monitor. Now, the good thing is that monitors are not that expensive anymore. You can get one for just a couple hundred bucks, which is really good. And I'm not talking about some crappy monitor that's gonna give you a crappy picture. No, I'm talking about a clean, crisp, clear monitor that accepts 4K and shows you all the detail you could want. And that's what the Andy Cine A62 is. So one of the great things about this monitor is the fact that it gets pretty bright. Uh, it's pretty bright out here right now. I have an ND on here, so you can't see how bright it is. I have an ND on the ZV-E10 as well. Um, but if you want to control the brightness of this monitor, this is one of the things that I love the most. So if you were to split this monitor into like a draw a line down the middle, if you take your finger here and if you go up with it and down, you'll see that changes the brightness of the monitor. You can see the little bar down here that goes back and forth as I uh, run my finger up and down. Now, if I go on the right-hand side of the screen here, let me switch sides. You can see it controls the volume. So if you have a pair of headphones in here, this is just a really quick way to change volume without reaching out to, at the top of the monitor or messing with anything. And I think that is a great thing. This is something that Atomos Ninja doesn't even have. So this is a great feature. In addition to that, if you just pull up from the bottom, then you get this menu here and you could do all kinds of things uh, that have to do with your exposure, with focus, like here's focus peaking here. Uh, you could do histograms, you can do waveform monitor, you could do all kinds of stuff here. And I think this is just a really good monitor setup just to be able to touch things and swipe and things like that. It almost reminds you of like a cell phone or something like that, like an iPhone. But again, just to get to this, you just swipe up and boom, just turn things off. Now, in addition to that, if you double tap the screen, then you get a menu here. Now this is all of your stuff inside the monitor that you can do. Now in addition to double tapping the screen, there's a menu button at the top that you can press 
and it'll get you the same thing. There are three function buttons at the top that you can program to do certain things. So like if I hit F1 here, this turns on all my different scopes. So I have, I have my waveform monitors, I have my RGB parade, I have everything in here if I wanted it. Then if I hit F2, this gives me the center marker here. So this tells me this is the center of my frame. Um, and then if I hit F3, then this is just my safety or my border. So this tells me uh, whatever I'm recording in this will be safe. So you could change these buttons here to have certain features in there. So like if you just want this F3 to be, uh, let's say false color, you can just press that and do uh, false color. So again, if I wanted to go to false color, I double tap the screen and then I can just go down to false colors here and turn it on. And there we go. We got false color. So this monitor, like I said, it's very intuitive the way it was designed as far as the touch features and things like that. It is up there with cell phones. The responsiveness of this screen is good too. I mean, it's really accurate. There's not many times where I'm trying to tap in and it doesn't respond to my taps. Uh, it's very responsive, which I love. One thing I will say about this monitor is that it's very reflective. Uh, it's even difficult for me to set the camera up here without seeing my reflection and you can see my hand there. Even with the sunshade on here, I have a polarizer on here, but if I turn it, then I don't see the screen either. So what you may wanna get with this monitor is some type of anti-reflective coating or like a, some type of screen that you can put on here just so it isn't so reflective. You get a really crisp picture because of the fact that it is reflective, but the downside again is the fact that it's so reflective, it's hard, it's hard not to see what's behind you uh, sometimes, but it is bright enough so that you can still see the picture uh, if you're at the right angle. So I will say that part about it. Now, as far as the build quality of this monitor, I'll say it's gonna be pretty good uh, as far as the buttons and things like that. But the body itself is plastic. Everything on this monitor is plastic. So keep that in mind when you buy this monitor. So you're gonna really wanna take care of this. Uh, I, you, don't, you wouldn't wanna drop it, things like that. Now, moving on to the arm on this, I'm gonna pull this down. Now, right now, everything looks straight. Um, but there is a knob on the side of this monitor here, uh, right here, and that knob right there just tightens the whole uh, assembly here. So this allows you to uh, turn the monitor like this up and down, but if you loosen this up a bit, then it makes it easier for you to, to, to adjust the monitor like that. Now I will say this arm is pretty flimsy. Uh, it's not as sturdy as I would like it to be. And one of the things you're gonna wanna be careful of, I'm gonna pan this tripod down here, is using this on your cold shoe mount. Now I have a cage on the ZV-E10 here, and I highly recommend getting a cage if you're gonna use this bracket here, because this type of force when you're adjusting the monitor up and down on your hot shoe actually, because this is active that you can plug things into here, that might mess that up over time. Uh, that kind of force and that kind of stress on it. So I definitely recommend getting a cage if you're gonna use this bracket. Now another plus about this bracket right here is the fact that it does have a cold shoe mount on it right here. So this cold shoe mount here comes in handy if you want to put like a microphone or something like that on it, uh, you're able to do that because you got a cold shoe mount right there. So uh, that's just another option. And I think that's a good thing that they thought of. And then in addition to the cold shoe, you have a quarter 20 in here as well. You can see that hole goes straight through. So if you needed to screw something on there, you could put it right there. So it's just, this is a very well thought out monitor from Andy Cinney. Now, the last thing I'll go over is this Velcro here. So this Velcro on the monitor uh, just keeps the hood on, but this whole thing is actually attached via plastic. So you could take this whole hood off and this just is right here in my hand. So if you didn't want to use uh, that Velcro hood over it, you don't have to, and it comes off pretty easy. And if you want to put it back on, it's not that difficult. I'm going to try to do this while I'm recording at the same time, but it just snaps right back in and there it goes, it's on. So if you wanted to remove that really quick for some reason, you have the ability to do that. But I, I highly recommend 
looking at least looking into this monitor even if you don't buy it just look at it because i do think it's a great monitor especially for the price i don't think you're going to beat it um i think one monitor that is similar to this one is going to be the feel world uh, they make some monitors that remind me a lot of this monitor let me turn the brightness up here with my uh, nd filter but it reminds me of this monitor a lot just the build the button layout just about every aspect of this monitor to be honest with you reminds me a lot of the feel world but there's a lot more to this monitor as far as the different functions and things that you can uh, do in here um, but i just wanted to go over some of the brief things about this monitor and let you guys know that i really think this monitor is a good monitor I wanna show you some mounting points on this monitor, which I think is pretty dope where they put them. So you got a mounting point here is a quarter 20. You have another, I'll show you this one here. There's another quarter 20 up here. Then you have another one on the back right here uh, where you can mount uh, another uh, device or you can mount the monitor from there. And I, I like this point here. And then there's another quarter 20 on the bottom here now on the bottom you have some more ports that i think are pretty interesting not only do you have the quarter 20 but you have the dc out so if you have another device that needs to be powered you can actually plug it into here and the monitor will feed that you also have a headphone port here so you can monitor your audio if you got if you have hdmi plugged in then you also have another charging point here which is a usb type c pd or power delivery so you can actually power this monitor uh, this is an MPF battery, but you can use something like a V-mount battery to power this as well or instead of that. Now this battery does come with the monitor, and if you press this button here, I don't know if you can see that, but the lights light up and it tells you what the charge of the battery is. And I thought that was just a nice little addition to this monitor here to even include that with it. Uh, but you do get this MPF battery. Now this second portion of the monitor here is to mount something like uh, a wireless HDMI system. So you can mount other accessories and they plug right into here. And I think that's just, again, really nice that they thought about that kind of stuff beforehand. And you wouldn't think that you would get something like this on a budget monitor, but again, you do get it. And it reminds me of the Feel World monitor. Now looking at the left side of the monitor here, we have our 12 volt DC here. We have our HDMI out, and then we have our HDMI in. And again, this monitor just pretty much has <laughs> all the connections you could ask for uh, in a monitor, especially it being budget and things like that. I can't really say enough about this monitor, how good it is. To be honest with you, I may actually buy myself another one because they did send me this, but I might buy another one just to throw on my other cameras and things like that because it's so cheap, but it has a lot of features on it. Now, another thing I will say about this monitor is the fact that it supports LUTs. A lot of people also ask me when it comes to shooting on the Sony ZV-E10, what picture profile should they shoot in? I like HLG2, and this monitor here supports HLG2s. And what that means is if I wanna shoot in HLG2, typically on the back of my screen, it looks a little bit washed out, so I don't know exactly what my picture is gonna look like. But with this monitor here, I can put it on HLG2 and I can see exactly what my picture is gonna look like. That way I'm not overexposed, underexposed, and I can make sure everything is exactly the way I want it. So that when I bring it into my computer later, I'm not surprised by what I see. I know exactly what I was getting in the field. So now when I bring it home, I know exactly what to expect. So this monitor is very helpful when it comes to that as well. There are a number of features too where you can see the audio meters on this monitor as well, which is very helpful. If you've ever been on the other side of the camera like I am on this, then having a monitor in front of you is very helpful to see if your levels are where they should be when we're speaking of audio. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about this monitor. Is this something that you would buy? Are you interested in it? Let me know. But until next time, I'll holla at y'all later. I'm out. Peace.